So, as we saw earlier this week, um, officials and high-up officials literally in place next to Liz Truss essentially decided to, well, leak comments that they were going to treat their Liz Truss's Australian counterpart, their Minister of Trade, essentially like some sort of naughty schoolboy by saying that they were going to put him or sit him on an uncomfortable chair and put him across from Liz Truss for over nine hours. And I know being across from Liz Truss for over nine hours would be quite an uncomfortable subject for anyone to stare at for such a long time. But these are international trade negotiations. And our government saying this, and it gets even worse, by the way, we'll get to that in a bit. And our government saying this does not put us in good stead to try and have trade talks. This is not how these talks should be negotiated. It's just flat out wrong. It's embarrassing for us. It makes us look weak, pathetic, um, and just overall unable to be trusted in trade negotiations. So a, a fantastic first step, you might think, but it gets worse from there because the British government then decided that they were going to, uh, well, not the British government, Liz Truss and her team decided that they were going to again insult um, Australia's trade minister by saying that he was not on Liz Truss's level and that he needed to bring himself up to her level. Let's let's just set the stage here at the moment. Liz Truss, so far, has signed absolutely, absolutely zero international trade agreements. All she has signed so far are essentially continuity agreements to say that we will con currently continue trade as if nothing has happened. That's what it is so far. And currently, only tiny small countries have signed up to it. Now, some of you are going to say, hold on, what about Canada? That's a continuity agreement. So at any moment, Canada could go, snap, not anymore. South Korea is also a continuity agreement. They could do exactly the same thing. But with Japan, essentially, we gave them a deal which was worse in every single conceivable way than the deal we had when we were in the EU. And it's not surprising they took it because it overwhelmingly favours Japan. Indeed, when trade experts looked at it, they basically said that only about 17% of it actually favours the UK. That's how bad it is. And now they're trying to get a hold of Australia and particularly New Zealand, which we're going to talk about in a moment. But essentially New Zealand and Australia were, were dominated by the by the Brexiteers and sold as this is the ultimate uh, prize for, for Brexit. And just as was highlighted in the um, in the article that we went over, it even said there that Johnson and the British government were desperate to do trade deals, especially with Australia and New Zealand, to try and justify Brexit. So at the moment, you have Liz Trust, who is nothing, nothing on the international trade secretary stage, anything. She's done nothing. She has no achievements whatsoever. The guy who has nothing has been in the international trade and doing deals for Australia for something like 15 plus years now. He is experienced, far more experienced than Liz Truss. And as I said, I said something about New Zealand. Well, this gets even worse. This gets even worse. So before we dive into how now not only have we pissed off Australia, but we've also annoyed, incredibly annoyed, New Zealand. So before we jump into that, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my uh, Patreon page as well as a one-off donation link. And as always, thank you very much to those people who do support me that way. And now on with the article. So this comes from Farmers Weekly. 
that it's not the UK version of Farmers Weekly. This is the New Zealand Farmers Weekly with the title called Trade Talks Get Dirty. Trade officials are on high alert for dirty tricks in trade talks with the United Kingdom after a succession of stories appeared in one of Britain's most widely read newspapers claiming that a free trade agreement with New Zealand is imminent. The Sun newspaper recently published a headline, Kiwi Go, Britain close to securing huge free trade deal with New Zealand, bringing cheaper wine and meat. It claimed that a rapid progress in the talks and that said negotiators had agreed the text of an outline agreed to slash tariffs on New Zealand produce entering the UK, including Marlborough wine, lamb and beef. The article follows a similar one in January, which predicted talks would all be wrapped up by Easter. But the tabloid's most recent report was also wide off the mark that New Zealand officials have said to immediately smelled a rat. A highly placed source says that the UK's most recent offer on access for New Zealand's agricultural exports ahead of the start of the four round negotiations <coughs> that begin on Monday have once again fallen well short of what New Zealand officials could accept, something British negotiators would well be aware of. The source says the suspicion in Wellington was that the story was planted by the British to pressure the Australians to accept the offer currently on the table on their own trade negotiations with the UK. They are playing games with Australia and New Zealand. <coughs> oh, sorry. And we will uh, uh, that we will somehow and that somehow we will be pressured into dropping our fundamental positions and accepting their rubbish deals for the sake of a deal ahead of the other, they said. So that, that's, I just want to read that again, because this isn't a, a British government. This is a New Zealand trade official saying this. They are pressuring them to somehow force them into dropping fundamental positions and accepting their rubbish deals. <laughs> so, us. New Zealand and Australia both know what is being put before them are completely rubbish deals. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we, we said this right from the start. These deals are not going to save Brexit. And yet, the Brexiteers are going to use these deals with Australia and New Zealand, and we'll get why to that in a moment, to justify Brexit. So anyway, he said, he also came on to say, the source says the timing of this latest article added to those suspicions. He said, the Australian trade minister is due in London in 13 days time and, uh, time, and they are wanting to put pressure on him, they claimed. Who is first to clinch a UK FTA is more a matter of a trans-Tasmanian -trans pride and could have serious consequences for exporters in both countries. The importance of being first to the finish line in trade negotiations was simply displayed when Australia pipped New Zealand to, um, to the post for a free trade agreement with South Korea in 2014. And Australian beef exporters gained significant immediate tariff advantage over their New Zealand rivals, who have since been catching up ever since, despite clinching a trade deal just a year later. By virtue of their 12-month head start, Australian beef remains a 2.7% tariff advantage over its New Zealand competition until at least 2030. When the gap closes and tariffs are scrapped entirely, under the South Korea-New Zealand uh, free trade agreement. And while New Zealand has lost market share in South Korea, uh, in the beef market, the scenario is different in the UK, where the uh, antipodent dairy and beef exports uh, have for decades been largely shut out of its consumer market by high tariffs designed by Brussels. Australian and New Zealand exporters will be eager for their 
uh, for the first mover advantage in establish themselves in a new market that is now outside the European Union. In the meantime, the New Zealand trade negotiations are holding the line. A foreign ministry uh, of, of affairs and trade spokesperson confirmed the ministry was aware of the UK press reports of the imminent New Zealand deal and said that New Zealand and the UK have shared uh, uh, ambition to swiftly conclude a world leading free trade agreement, they said. But the desire to move at pace does not outweigh our joint commitment to negotiating comprehensive agreements that remove all tariffs. There is still a lot of work to do to fully reflect that commitment. What did I, What have we been saying for the longest time? And that is, there's two reasons why Liz Truss and the Brexiteers and indeed Boris Johnson are so desperate to get into this area. You've got to be aware of two things. First of all, once again, because this happens every couple of decades, the light of where uh, trade in the world shifts constantly. And it is shifting to the Pacific Ocean. Namely because of China, predominantly because of China, and the belief of the Brexiteers is that somehow they can magically become some sort of Pacific country when we are not a Pacific country. We are a European country. And that we can somehow get on this action by joining the, the TTP and somehow we will, quote, benefit. But of course, as we have explained multiple times on here, it does not matter. The Pacific Ocean is on the other side of the world. We are not going to sudden pull up anchor and the United Kingdom is somehow just going to sail around the world and become a Pacific, uh, you know, an island in the Pacific Ocean. That is just not what is going to happen. But somehow the Brexiteers think that they can make that happen. No, that will not happen. And just as we went over yesterday, uh, well, last week, sorry, even the Australians said it very clearly. This trade deal does not improve their GDP. It does not improve the UK's GDP. And as we have heard from other trade experts and economists have said it very clearly from day one. We cannot replace our lost European trade by having to, by trying to rely on, on countries such as New Zealand, Australia, and all these other, you know, quote, other countries that they want to try and do um, trade deals with. It will not replace our lost European trade. That is just the fact. Trade gravity is a thing. Trade flow is a thing. And until at least the sensible people in the Conservative Party get power back, we won't end up rejoining the Single Market and Customs Union. But, like I say, that's that's an internal, should we say, discussion in the Conservative Party. We've talked about a lot about that before. But trust me, that is one of the big current ideas because, of course... Us doing this is a part of the old traditional Empire 2.0 and, of course, the big planning for Global Britain. But, of course, as we've said before, Global Britain is in, comp is in direct competition with the levelling up agenda that Boris Johnson is planning. Because the levelling up agenda, if you want to do that and improve the North and level up the North competitively, you have to impose tariffs, you have to impose restrictions, and you have to be protectionists to be able to build up the North once again to a decent level. And now, as you can see, these two big competitors, these two big ideas in, in the Conservative Party are going to clash big time. And once again, another split will happen. And hopefully, hopefully... The more moderates in the Tories, under namely David Cameron, may, might be able to make somewhat of a comeback and actually be able to push once again to rejoin uh, the single market and the customs union. Because they were always the ones who were very, very aware of just how damaging it is to leave 
that those two organizations and once we're back into those the then question then becomes well why aren't we part of the eu and of course as always as was said by the australians these deals are being done at pace and desperation to try and prove brexit because we constantly said and have shown trade deals big trade deals and good trade deals take years to negotiate years you're talking at least seven to ten years normally for a good free trade agreement the brexiteers convinced themselves that they could go and do uh, trade deals instantly very quickly easy and around the world but they can't and they have so far proved that they can't do that and like i say the japan deal that we signed shows just how bad these trade deals with australia and new zealand are probably going to be for us like i say if that trade deal only favors us about 17 percent then what are these two with australia and new zealand going to favor us and as I've, I've always said there, it ain't going to be good for us at all. So, as always, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And, of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as one of the nation link called Buy Me A Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next time.